Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today I am going to show you one of the methods that I use to be able to remove supports easily. So let's go ahead and get into this video. So in this video, I am going to show you one method that I use to be able to easily remove my supports using a prying method. All right, so I have to give just a little bit of a disclaimer. This is just one method. I use a bunch of different methods when it comes to removing supports because supports can be so different from print to print. And it's really important to have like an arsenal of different ways to be able to remove your 3D printed supports. So if you're interested in seeing a full video where I show you all the different ways, I'll go ahead and put a link to it up here for you. So that being said, let's talk about one of the most important things and that is safety. Now, this is the most important part of this video, the safety aspects of removing your 3D printed supports. Now, if you have been printing for a while or just a little bit and you've removed some supports, you might have already realized that removing supports sometimes, depending on the size of the supports and stuff, I mean, they can be razor sharp once you start breaking them. And when you're done, your hands have all these tiny little cuts or big cuts on your hands. And it looks like you were trying to do like a dental inspection with a badger or something. I mean, I've walked away sometimes when I first got started into 3D printing and I had just blood dripping down my hands and I had little cuts everywhere. And I was like, there has got to be a better way. And lucky, and lucky for you, all of my trials and errors, I finally found something that works really good when it comes to removing supports to be able to protect your hands. And that is cut resistant gloves. So these gloves are actually cut resistant. So it's not easy for even a knife to cut through some of this. I'm not saying that cut resistant gloves, you can just take a razor blade to your palm and it will be fine. It's resistant to it. I mean, it's not cut proof. So I will say that right in the beginning. So, but this will definitely protect you from your supports, cutting your hands to pieces. I strongly recommend getting a pair of these and I am going to put a link to the description of all of the things that I'm using down below for you. And these are pretty affordable too. And the nice thing about these is these are fitted to me and a size medium fits me perfect and they come in all different sizes. And you still have the dexterity to be able to pick up things and get in there and even hold tools. And that's why I like these so much because there are some really cheap cut resistant gloves out there that don't have this coating. And it's the coating that I have found over the years that it really does help to be able to use these. So the first thing, obviously, you need to protect your hands. Now let's talk about the second thing that we need to worry about. Now the second thing you need is a pair of safety glasses. And honestly, these are the most important things you really need because this is going to save your eyes. I can't tell you how many times I have removed supports and then suddenly snap and then just a piece goes right into my eye. But luckily I wear safety glasses and it just dings right off of it. These are fairly inexpensive. You can get safety glasses just about anywhere, but they are worth their weight in gold. I can't, I honestly, I cannot tell you how many times I could have been hit in the eye when removing supports because you'll have little tiny pieces that will just like break off or snap and they just go flying. So be sure to protect your eyes. I can't, I cannot tell you how important this is. So be sure to get a set of safety glasses and some cut resistant gloves to be able to save your hands and to be able to save your eyes. So now that we've got the safety out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this method where I show you one way that I easily remove my 3D printed supports. All right, so the tools we're going to be using for the prying method is honestly, I use just a regular screwdriver all right, so the tools that I use for the prying method is first, I just have a wide standard screwdriver. That's it. This is one of my main tools right here. Then I have these little picks that I picked up. I think I got some of these on Harbor Freight. I think I got some on Amazon. Now, I really like the ones that have like the points to them because they can kind of get in these areas that you're going to see to be able to help pry away some of this stuff. But they also have like little 
you know, wedges as well on the other side. But these are really nice because they're just stainless steel. But a screwdriver for this method is one of my favorites. And you can get just different size screwdrivers as well as if you wanted to get like an awl or a pick, that works just as well too. Just as long as it's something to where you can get in there and pry. And you're going to see in just a second. So for this method, I'm going to show you on a tree support 3D print and a standard 3D print. And this model is Louie from DuckTales that was modeled by Pixel and Plastic. And I'll go ahead and I'll be putting links down in the descriptions for you so you can get these models too if you want to. So for this method, I think it's really important to understand when is it best to use it. And it's really for when you have a 3D print that has a little bit of a lip. So you can kind of see this gap right here where the support wasn't fully touching the 3D model. That right there is exactly what we're looking for. And that is only because we want to be able to get the screwdriver in there to be able to pry it. Now, this is the other thing that I'm going to say. When you're prying this, like I'm going to push this in here and I'm basically just going to pry it off of the print. And it's going to come off pretty easy. But I will say, when you're doing this, make sure you're very careful with it because you could gouge your 3D print or if you put enough leverage towards it, it will break your 3D print. Now this is just a really big head and there's nothing really to break off of it. But you have to be careful because if this was a smaller print, I could easily break something off when I do this. So for this one, I'm going to show you just how easy this method is. So I'm going to find like a nice sized gap and I'm going to get my screwdriver in there. And we're going to just go in there and I'm going to just slide it and that is it. So now that I've got it in there and it went pretty far, I'm just going to pry it off. And, I'm, and all I'm doing is scooting my screwdriver in the more it releases. That way I can just keep prying it off. And there we go. So now we can see that I got that much off. So the next part, you're going to want to get yourself some snips. And personally, I would recommend if you have a pair like this, get rid of them. <laughs> and you want to buy a better pair of snips. You use snips so much. It is well worth the investment to be able to buy a really solid pair with a good handle that isn't going to break. I can't tell you how many of these I've gotten with 3D printers that they end up just breaking and then like the, this little like silicone handle just like slides off. And if yours is like that, invest the money because these are worth their weight in gold. And all I'm going to do once I've got it like this, I'm going to just snip off any of the excess and there we go so now we have that and you can even use your snips to pull off any ex excess that you see there like this like I can just grab that and pull those off and for this next spot I'm going to use a smaller one because I don't want to torque on the neck with this screwdriver so I'm just going to push in and then I'm just going to pry it off and it's literally just that easy just using prying and then it'll come right off for you and then you can see that this is actually looking pretty clean. And another great thing that you can have is a set of small pliers. Now, this set that I have, it has this one that is really flat. It's a very flat faced. And these are excellent for removing little bits of supports that still are stuck on your 3D print. So I can easily just grab it and then just pinch that off like this. And then there we go. And, and I can just keep doing that and get really close to my 3D print to be able to remove any excess 3D printed supports. And I can get a very nice clean cut. So that is how I remove my supports using the prying method. So I went ahead, so I went ahead and turned off my light just so you can see how clean I was able to remove that support. And honestly, you saw how fast that was. Like it took no time whatsoever. And that is the nice thing about this. When you find a support that has those gaps that you can go in there and just pry it and keep moving your way towards the center, they come off so easy. So the prying method is a really good method to use. So now that I've shown you how to do it on standard supports, 
let's look at tree supports. So when it comes to tree supports, it's really no different. But like I said before, you want to be able to find supports to where you can easily get in there and just pry them out. Now, if this was like, say, a big base and I had a huge amount of supports here, when they're tree supports, this prying method doesn't work too well. It really works great when there's just a flat line of tree supports. So you can see how these flat line of tree supports are just right along the edge here. So all I have to do is just literally go in here and just pry it off like that. And I mean, these supports came off beautifully. And here we go again, that, like, that last one did it. So I could just kind of go in here like this, twist, and there we go. And then I've gotten them off. And obviously there are some smaller supports that if you can just grab and break off, break them off. That's the beautiful thing about tree supports. Now, depending if you're using something that has a brim or a skirt, you might get some of this edging right here that you just kind of get off. There's two ways of doing it. First, you could be using a deburring tool. And I love these because they're so easy to use to remove those skirts and brims. Now, all you do is literally you just drag it across and you can see how it just cuts it off right there. And it just gives you a nice clean edge. And the other way, if you don't have a deburring tool, is just using an X-Acto knife. And you can go through here and just slice that off. And either way, you can get a really nice edge, whether you cut it off or you use a deburring tool. So now, moment of truth. Look at that. Fits beautifully. And you don't even see any support marks on these edges. And that is great. And one other thing that I should mention, I did this one in Cura and I did this one in Bamboo Studio. So I gave two different slicers to print these two different pieces. And you can see how the results are just wonderful. So you can see our final results. We don't even see any support marks on the corners right there. This model is just made beautifully. It fits. I can't believe how nice this fits. And being able to have those supports not leave any residue or any other extra pieces of filament on there really does help. And on the back, it really doesn't look bad at all, especially that it's all white and it's kind of hard to see if there's any little rough spots on it. So I hope this method will help you to be able to remove your 3D printed supports easily. And I will just say again, this was just one method. There are so many different other methods to be able to remove your 3D printed supports depending on the situation. So it's important to understand all of the different ways that you can remove your supports. So if you're interested in learning all of the different ways that I use, you can check out this video right here. Other than that, I wish you a great day and I hope to see you over here in this video.